Hi everybody, this is Mickey Adams in Dallas, Texas, and this is the Nashville Number System lesson number one. Although you do not need to know how to read music, you do need to know some basic concepts of music theory, which we're going to discuss right now. Please don't be intimidated by the fact that I have a staff on my whiteboard. There are no sharps and no flats in the signature, no time signature, and uh, it's really not going to be necessary for you to read music. But again, you are going to need to understand some basic theory. So let's get started. The, what I have here on my whiteboard is a C major scale. This equates to all of the white keys on your keyboard, on your piano. If you were to strike all the white notes starting at middle C, uh, this is exactly what you would play. And if you went all the way up to the other end of the keyboard, the staff would just continue with exactly these same notes. So what I have here is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. No sharps, no flats. There's no time signature here, so this is not a whole tone. This is just for distance is all we're doing. So let's look at from C to D. C to D on an electric guitar or any other instrument is a whole step, uh, meaning there is a half step between C and D. Of course, there's a C sharp, and then there's a D sharp between D and E. So we have a whole step. It equates to fret number one to fret number three, etc. The distance from the one first note in the scale to the second note in the scale is not referred to a two, but referred to as a nine. Now we'll get into this when we start building uh, basic chords and altering them. The second in a C major scale is a whole step and a whole step from the root, and this interval is a third, in this case a major third. A flatted third note, in this case a D sharp or an E flat, would be a minor third interval from the key of C, and so on and so forth. So the formula for a major scale is quite simple. It's whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 half. If you start on any note on any instrument and you play this formula, you move a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, and so on, you will build a major scale, and its root will be the, the note that you started on, and it will be the last or eighth note that you ended on. Now, for the number system, it's diatonic chord pattern more on this coming up, is major, minor, minor, major, 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 diminished, major. So if we can memorize these two formulas, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major, we are going to show you how you build the chords along the number system. Let's take, let's build a major triad. Now we're gonna need three notes to build a chord or imply a chord, and we're going to determine from the second note in the triad whether it's major or minor. We're going to do that this way. Whole step, whole step. So we're going to go C, D, E, and we're going to use the first tone, the third tone, and the fifth tone. In this case, we have a C, an E, and a G. Now, it matters not what key you're in. You could fill the staff full of sharps and flats. The distances from this note to that note are mathematical constants. They do not change. The staff just tends to confuse people who don't read music. So the number system was devised to start at a specific datum, in this case a root. So we have a unit or a location on the scale to measure the distance from this chord to that chord and so on and so forth. It matters not, again, what key we're in. So we're going to build a major triad. We're going to play C, E, and G. Now, this is a major triad in the key of C. If we flat the E, we'll have a minor third. So we'll have a root, a minor third, and a fifth. So we have effectively built a chord. Now, how we're gonna use C to measure the distance from the one note to the next or one chord to the next along the diatonic chord path is quite simple. Let's take the first note in the scale, C, the third E, and uh, yeah, the major third E, and the fifth tone, G, and let's take all these notes within the C scale and let's move them all up one, uh, one movement along the scale path. So the C will now become a D, the E will become an F, and the G will become an A. So what you've effectively done is you've had a C major triad, and as we moved up the scale path major, the second chord is minor. Well, guess what? D, F, and A make a D minor triad. That is chord number two. If we move them up again, now we have E, G, and B. Well, we have an E minor triad. The next one builds an F major. The next one builds a G major. Then on to A minor, the relative six for the key of C. 
The sixth tone in a C major scale is A. A becomes what we refer to as the relative minor. Now this is, this is very important, important in writing charts as well as understanding how we write things in a minor key. Uh, the seventh again is always diminished and I'm going to uh, reinforce that for you uh, later on down the road. So if you get the basic idea from C to D minor is from the one chord to the two chord, the three chord is E minor, the four chord is F major, G major, A minor, the sixth, uh, B diminished, and C major. This is where the number system comes from. Now it's a whole lot easier for me to write four chord dominant seven like this, especially when we're using extremely altered chords such as 13s. Uh, well, what is a 13? Well, it's a, if it's not minor 13, it's major 13, then it's a major chord with a six and a seven uh, note added to it somewhere. Six and seven is 13, basic math, which is basically all that theory is and reading music. We're only measuring distances from one note to the next and building chords. And we're moving them about what we call a diatonic path. Now, the diatonic path basically means that the notes that we are using only pertain to the C scale. So therefore, there are no sharps and flats. This is the simplest method that we can, we can use to explain exactly how the number system works. Well, let's look at some chord formulas, some extremely famous chord formulas, for instance, the doo-wop progression. Uh, one, six, two, five. And the key of C would be C, A minor, A minor, six. Uh, two is D minor, and the five chord is G. Now, if we were in the key of, let's say, B, what do you think B would be? Well, the distances would all remain the same, but now we would have what? We'd have B, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, and F sharp. But even though they're written with sharps and flats, if you move them up the scale to C, a half step up, you would actually have the exact same distances between the chords. So this is where the number chart came from. It's a whole lot easier for guys in the studio to write a chart as opposed to writing all the sharps and flats, et cetera, et cetera, and leave it up to you to determine what you're going to alter in the chords to give them uh, flavor or uh, some pizzazz. In other words, is, are we going to play a major seven on the four chord? Or are we going to play a dominant seven on the seven chord? Or, or are we going to play a 13 with a sharp five flat nine on the five chord to turn back to the one? Or are we going to augment the five chord by raising the fifth to turn to the one chord? Et cetera, et cetera. And that's getting rather complicated, it sounds like. But in essence, it's all really, really quite simple if you understand the basics of how chords are formed. So this is how the number system was derived. And of course, it's also used for communication on stage. Well, we're going to play uh, I Fall to Pieces. One to the four to five, five flat four, five one. Simple mathematical computation. So that's lesson one for the Nashville number system. I hope it makes a little bit more sense to you. And uh, we will, in the future, we'll construct some exercises for you so we can learn these in a position. In other, way, in other words, uh, if you're playing electric guitar or pedal steel, it doesn't matter. Uh, but let's uh, take the key of a C sharp and learn how to play a one six two five. How do we play a one four five? What does it look like physically on the guitar? And this will reinforce your ability to to learn the fingerboard backwards and forwards and will increase your musical knowledge and develop your ear all at the same time. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Nashville Number System, lesson number one. This is Mickey Adams. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you back at the pedal steel.